Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is the 1st of November and so I thought I'd give you a quick overview of my books that I'm currently reading for um, this month reading vlog and maybe also some reading plans that I have. So one of the books I'm currently reading is Library of the Unwritten by H.A. Hackwith. I'm 200 pages into that, so about halfway. I'm really enjoying this book, I'm having a great time reading it, and yeah, I'm excited to finish it soon. Then the next book on my list that I definitely want to finish soon is Les Miserables. Um, this is by Victor Hugo and I've been reading this in September and then I took a break from it in October and there is the Les Mis along, so it ends I think in two weeks so I hope that I can finish this book by then. I have the fourth and fifth part of the book left so I'm a bit more than halfway through so this is definitely gonna be a challenge to finish it in time but even if I don't you know I just had such a blast and I was really glad to have a reason to pick up such a massive classic because I have never read a classic that big before so that was definitely cool to have a reason to do that and so this is very high on my list of books I need to finish in November. Then in July I started this short story collection called Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang and I have... I'm not quite sure, I think I have three stories in here left, so I would love to finish this off, but this is not a very high priority because um, these are just very, um, yeah, very complicated sci-fi stories. They're absolutely amazing, but I just really enjoy taking my time with this and just reading one of the stories whenever I'm in the mood. So that's something I think might happen in November, but I'm not quite sure. Then I'm also currently in the middle of my audiobook. I have ten and a half hours left of Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. So that's also a book I'm very much enjoying. And yeah, it just gives the perfect fall mood. I love the characters and yeah, so far it's been great. So you'll definitely hear more about that. And then for my reading plans, one book I definitely want to read is um, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This is a collection that also has other stories of him. So this is the Dark Academics book club for November and I'm very excited because this is also the story that The Haunting of Blind Manor is loosely based on and I've been loving that show. I have two episodes left now and so yeah, I'm very excited for this story. And then lastly, I have this stack of library books that I have to get back to the library in November. So one book I really, really want to read this month is um, this one. I forgot the English title. I think it's just called Longburn or something like that. This is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice by Joe Baker. And yeah, I really want to get to that one. The other ones I would love to read too, but they're just not that high a priority right now. So maybe I will have to check them out at a later point in time again, but we'll see about that. So I just finished Bly Manor and I'm shattered. It is the 3rd of November right now. And I still have not read a single page this month, but last night I finished The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix and now I'm just exhausted. I really feel like emotionally drained and also super tired because I feel like my brain had to, you know, just work with all of that for the whole night. <laughs> and so even though I slept, I just feel like really really tired today um, which isn't great because I actually wanted to be quite productive with work today but we'll see. So yeah so far no reading update but a strong recommendation that you watch The Haunting of Bly Manor because it's perfection and also um, it is loosely based on The Turn of the Screw which is the group book for the Dark Academics book club in November so I'll definitely read that later this month and I'm now really excited to see what the source material is. But yeah, I will keep you updated. So today is the 4th of November and yes, I am dressed again because again, I have an online meeting today. So yesterday I managed to read 42 pages in Library of the Unwritten, which means I'm about 250 pages into this and still loving it, still very much enjoying it. And I hope that I can read the rest of this fairly quickly now because I'm already getting behind with my reading plans because I need to finish Les Mis 
and um, then I also listened to a little bit more of my audiobook. I have 10 hours of Cemetery Boys left now, but I feel like right now, since I've been only listening to like 15 mini minutes here or there, um, yeah, it's just um, slowed down a little bit, but not because of the book, I guess, but just because of the way I've been listening to it. So I also hope that I will pick up my audiobook more often now again, because last night, usually I listen to my audiobook when I do the dishes, but last night I started listening to some Christmas music uh, because I felt so cozy. And yeah, so we'll see how that goes, um, because I am really, really excited to um, yeah, also move on with my audiobooks because I'm a very, very seasonal reader. So um, yeah, I want to get into more cozy vibes now. And so Cemetery Boys with the whole ghost thing, you know, it's kind of like October. So I want to be done with it soon, even though I'm also enjoying that one a lot. So yeah, that's my update. So I just got Wondersmith in the mail to match my Nevermore copy because I got it in the wrong edition last time. So it is the 5th of November and yesterday I managed to read about, I don't know, maybe 60 pages more in the Library of the Unwritten and I'm now so far in that I will finish this book today and I'm so so super excited. I really want to know um, how it all ends last night there was a bit where I was really really concerned but you know it turned around again so I'm fine but yeah I just really really like this book and right now I'm between a 4.5 and a 5 star for it so we'll see how I fall at the end it's kind of unfortunate that I had a little bit of a reading slump reading this because it definitely had nothing to do with the book it was just about me not wanting to read for a week so I think I would um, love this even more if that hadn't happened but yeah I'm just so excited to finish this book tonight and then I will head into Les Mis and hopefully finish that off and yeah that will be my big project for the month. Apart from that I also listened to a little bit more of my audiobook today, um, Cemetery Boys, and there were two super cute scenes today so this is mild spoilers but not really so you can just skip over the rest of this clip if you don't want to hear it but the first really cute thing that happened is when Julian talks about being gay and he talks about one of his friends and that his friend is gay too and then he says um, that you know LGBTQ people are like wolves because they always come in a pack and I love that <laughs> it was just such a cute moment I really really enjoyed that and then also um, what uh, what happened is that they were looking at the yearbook and the main character didn't want um, Julian to look at the, his picture in the yearbook because it had his dead name underneath and so when Julian got hold of the book in a moment where nobody was watching him, he um, actually crossed out the dead name and just wrote um, the main character's real name underneath and it was just so cute. <laughs> that just made me so happy. It was such a cute moment and I really, really liked that. Um, yeah, so definitely still enjoying that audiobook a ton and I'm just glad that I get to listen to bigger chunks now again because... As I said, I've been just been a little bit slumpy, so I didn't read, I didn't listen to my audiobook, even though I have two great books going on right now. Um, but yeah, back on track and enjoying it a lot. Also, what I mentioned about the Library of the Unwritten, which is maybe also like a mild spoiler, but not really, is that the main character in this book is actually pansexual. And I love that as well, because I feel like we need so much more rep for pansexual main characters. So yeah, really enjoy that. So I just finished the Library of the Unwritten in the bathtub, as you can see from my white hair and I loved it. This was such a fun story, such a good book. I decided to give it 4.5 stars because, you know, 45 star book, there just has to be something very special in it and I feel like 
this is a fun book, a great book, great characters, um, very unpredictable storyline and stuff like that. But it's not like life changing, I guess. So 4.5 stars it is. I think this would be a good book for people who liked the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor, especially if you didn't, you know, love the romance that much. If you can read a smaller book that has less romance, I think this might be quite enjoyable because I felt like the kind of dynamics with the angels and hell were quite similar and then also this kind of theme of some kind of a collector person. I just felt like it had similarities that, you know, might make people enjoy this if they liked that series and it is well beloved so I think this one should definitely be too. As I said, it's a very compelling story and I love the characters. I really felt for a Leto or Lido, I don't know how to say it, but Claire is such a good main character as well and yeah, I'm really excited to read the second book of this. I got this one from the library and I don't know whether my library will get the second one so it might take me a little bit to acquire it. But yeah, I will definitely continue on with this because I think this was just such a well-crafted story and I'm glad that this is not a book that ends up in the unwritten wing in Hell's Library. So yeah, so far about this book, I will talk more about it in the wrap-up later on. But now I thought maybe I could watch The Others with Nicole Kidman. I'm a little bit scared, but you know, I rented it from Amazon and so I guess I will watch that tonight. We'll see. Hey guys, it is the 8th of November today. I probably don't look my best. Um, I started having a really bad migraine yesterday evening and it turned really bad overnight. And so now I took some painkillers and I used a lot of heat for my back because my migraines always start in my back. And I'm kind of slightly feeling better now. Um, since we last spoke, I haven't read anything, to be honest, and that is because my editing program broke and I, um, you know, had filmed the whole October wrap and everything and wanted to put it up this um, weekend and yeah, my program just wasn't working anymore and so I spent you know, Friday afternoon and then Saturday the whole morning trying to figure it out and then um, yeah, I, I was so frustrated because I tried a ton of other programs and nothing would work. Some wouldn't even start and the other ones that would start were just so basic that, you know, I couldn't really edit my videos with them. And so, yeah, I got really frustrated with that. And then we decided to just um, make a nice dessert and a nice dinner. And then um, in between I tried it again and then suddenly um, after trying like I think four or five different programs, my original program worked again. And I mean, I've tried it, you know, sporadically in between like probably for 10 or 11 times. And then suddenly it worked again. <laughs> and so yeah, um, it was just very, very frustrating. And I just, these are the kind of things that I can't deal with. You know, when there's no reason, I don't know how to fix the problem. I just emotionally can't deal with that. So it was a rough weekend so far, um, but my vlog is up now. And I also just edited a cooking video, which has been on my list of things I wanted to do for a while now. I think I recorded this video a month ago and then just never sat down to edit it. Because, um, yeah, especially for December, I definitely want to revive my cooking channel. I always have this kind of lull in the summer where I don't put up videos there. And it is something I really enjoy doing. I love my cooking videos. So yeah, the channel name is Baking Cooking Fun if you're interested. And it would mean the world to me if you check it out. But yeah, so I'm finally in a better place now. It's already Sunday afternoon, but I think I will sit down with Lemus now, finally, and start part four. I just realized I forgot I wanted to mention something else. Yesterday, my first Italian children's book arrived. This is L'Unicorno che sognava il Natale. And yeah, this is the first um, Italian book I will try to read. I've been um, trying to learn Italian on Duolingo for about 
I don't know, one and a half years now? It's been a while and I feel like um, it's good for learning, you know, some basic vocabulary and stuff like that, but I just want to advance more. So yesterday this arrived in the post and I already translated the back yesterday and I had a ton of new words. So yeah, I'm so excited to get into this. This is about a unicorn. Um, his name is Isidoro and he is part of a fairground um, thing and he is dreaming of Christmas it seems and so this is about him finding happiness and so it sounds very cute and as I said I'm just very excited to translate this and just advance in my Italian skills. Good morning guys it is the 11th of November and today is the day for online meetings again so I thought I'd do a quick update we have started reading the return of the king and the lord of the rings series i'm reading this to my partner and we haven't even finished chapter one yet because it's quite a long chapter to be honest and when i read this aloud i only read like 10 pages at a time or something like that but yeah we started our reread of the final lord of the rings book which is exciting because we started with the silmarillion then we did the hobbit and now we're doing the trilogy so yeah we are nearing the end with that and then i'm also making progress in les mis i'm now on page 775 so yeah it's going slowly but surely and so far um chapter no part four um has been yeah i don't know not the most interesting one we're starting with a very long ramble and then now we're getting back into the characters and we learn what happened with them um so the last bit i've read right now was kind of um you know the time that we have already seen in part three but from a different perspective uh, from the perspective of jean Valjean uh, and cosette so yeah um, as I said, slowly but surely making my way through limits. Today is Friday the 13th of November and I have two reading updates. First of all, I have passed the 800 page mark of Les Mis. I'm now about 830 pages into this and I would like to challenge myself to make it to page 1000 um, this weekend, but I'm not quite sure about that. But I would love to finish the fourth part um, if I you know, can really sit down and read my way through this, but we will see. Um, yeah, but that's that for Les Mis. And then I read two more stories in this short story collection by Ted Chiang. It's called Stories of Your Life and Others. And the stories I've read are The Evolution of Human Science, which is a very, very short story, which, um, you know, thinks about how uh, science will evolve when there is some kind of superhuman intelligence and how, you know, science by humans isn't needed anymore basically and they're not even able to understand the kind of results of science anymore so that was quite terrifying <laughs> since i am a scientist and i decided to give it four stars and the other one is hell is the absence of god and in that story we follow three characters in a world where there are quite um, regular visitations where angels come down from the sky and they're basically like nat natural disasters so like thunderstorms that are really bad and stuff like that so they usually destroy a lot when they come to earth but they also bless some people when they do that so um, I really liked that idea um, because, you know, an angel would come down and maybe heal five people, but in his, you know, um, descent and um, going back to heaven, he would then like injure 10 people and kill five people and stuff like that. So yeah, this weird imbalance and the story mainly deals with what you know religion and belief actually is. So I also really like that. And, and I and I decided to give it four stars as well. So I have one story left in this collection. I'll probably read that next week in the bathtub because Les Mis is not made to be in the bathtub. So yeah, I'll tell you more about that later. So it is Sunday the 15th of um, November right now. You can see it's a very bright sunny day. <laughs> I have this weird reflection in my flat on the um, floor. Um, so I have this 
funny little light from underneath. Um, I just updated my reading list for this year and I have currently finished 76 books, which is pretty cool because, um, yeah, my um, Goodreads goal is always 52, which is something I can quite easily do. I don't have to, um, you know, stress myself out for it, but my kind of like... Um, my real goal kind of is always between 75 and 85 books, so I'm on a great track. Thank you 2020 for letting me spend all my time at home. And so to um, get my page count up as well, I think I will continue reading Limbus now. And yeah, I said I wanted to challenge myself to finish part four. I don't think that's gonna happen because I haven't really read the last couple of days, but we'll see, I'm just gonna sit down now and read some and then I will probably clean my apartment a little bit more, clean myself because my hair is a mess and yeah the rest of the day is just me reading basically. So today is the 16th of November, I always have to think which month it is and um, yeah so it's Monday today and yesterday I managed to read quite a lot in Les Mis. let me grab it. Uh, <laughs> So yesterday I managed to read 90 pages, so now I have only 300 pages of these beasts left, this beast, so I'm very very excited. Um, I'm still enjoying the story a lot. I feel like now we're getting into a part where it might be more action-packed and as I have said before, I feel like sometimes the action scenes are the ones that I like the least. But I'm very excited to see where the story goes now. I feel like all the kind of historical backdrop is kind of lost on me because obviously Hugo wrote it in a way as if this had just happened and people knew about these things and he's like dropping names and also street names like left and right. And these are the parts that I can't really keep up with because I don't know a lot about French history even though I probably should because I um, uh did a lot of history in school, so yeah, I don't know why we didn't talk about it in such great detail, but so we'll see. But yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens with these characters, because I've never seen the film, I've never seen the musical, so it's all up in the air for me, and I hope that I can finish this soon. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think I have about 60 pages left of part 4, so maybe, possibly, I'm not quite sure, I can finish this today or tomorrow, but um, I will have to check with my word work schedule, so we'll see. Apart from that, I now only have about 7 hours left of my audiobook, Cemetery Boys. And it is such a weird thing with me and this book because when I'm listening to it, I'm enjoying it a lot, I'm having a great time, I think it's a fantastic book, but I just don't feel like picking it up. And I don't know if I'm just a little bit in an audiobook slump or if it is this audiobook that just doesn't fit my mood right now, but it's bothering me. So I really hope that I can finish this audiobook very soon and just power through the... Um, second half of this now because I really want to know what's happening. I really want to know that the characters are okay. But yeah, it's just, I just feel like I'm in the mood for something different now that, you know, October has passed, so we'll see. Um, I already have, you know, my mind on some books that I might start next on audio, but for now I'm working on Cemetery Boys. Also, today arrived my second Italian children's book. This one is called La Storia di Babbo Natale and um, yeah, I'm very excited to translate this. And I think this is going to be the easier one. The other one has way more text, so yeah, I'll keep you updated on my progress. Look what just arrived in the mail. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I really want to reread the whole series so far. Ah! Okay, I got more book mail. I'm so excited. This is one of the December books for the Dark Academics Book Club. And also it has gold on the cover, which fits one of the prompts for the Very Merry Readathon in December. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe I will read that um, during that readathon. I'm not quite sure because December is always so busy. So I hope, I hope that I will have time. 
um, but I will definitely read this uh, in December. So today's the 18th of November and I finished part four in Les Mis last night, which is very, very exciting. So I only have part five left now. And so I hope that I can make it to page 1000 today, which would be super, super exciting. And I think it's very realistic. And then I have 200 pages left. So right now I think it's about 220 pages maybe. So yeah, I'm so excited for this last part now. And yeah, it just feels so surreal that I have read so much of this book already. It's so crazy. So yeah, I'm definitely ready for this to be over. I am enjoying it. I think for me this is a four star read. I do enjoy the majority of it, but then some things just lose me a little bit, especially the street names. Like Victor Hugo had a problem with mentioning too many street names and since they're all in French and I don't speak any French, I just, I don't know. I, I can't keep them straight. I never know which house is on which street and yeah, <laughs> that's just something, especially with the last part I read yesterday, where there were like so many street names and I'm like just lost. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, as I said, I'm very excited for the last part. I know that a lot of people in the group chat for the read along mentioned that they were really sad during this last part. So I hope that there will be some great moments now to come and since I've never seen the musical or anything like that I have no clue what's about to happen so yeah I think some of the characters are gonna die <laughs> we've already this is a spoiler though so if you don't want to hear it just wait for the end of this clip um just skip over it but um yeah we've already lost Eponine I think or Eponine or I don't know how to say her name but yeah she was a character that I thought was so interesting and I think the way that her storyline ended um was fitting but also I wanted her to be like a badass queen so yeah I'm excited to watch the movie adaptation and see the way she's portrayed there because I feel like you get very different pictures of her in the beginning of the book and then her later part in the story so yeah um I just, uh, this was one of the characters where I was like in the beginning, like, yeah, she doesn't really deserve good. But then when you see where her life goes, you're like, oh, but did she deserve that? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, that's, that's one part. But yeah, on to part five now. So I'm 1060 pages into Les Mis now, which sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. And yeah, so I finished the first part of the last part. <laughs> so the first chapter of part five um, yesterday, which was a very, very lengthy one. And I think today I won't get much, much reading done in this book. Um, because I will go into the bathtub in a second. I just have to do some cleaning around the house um, and then I will go into the bathtub and this monster does not go into the bathtub with me. So yeah, I'm not quite sure if I will make any progress on this today, but yeah, I'm just so confident that I can finish this um, this week or maybe next week. We'll see about that. But one book I will definitely finish today is this short story collection by Ted Chang because I only have the last story left and it is about 50 pages so it's the perfect length for the bathtub and so this is what I'm gonna finish up today and I'm very very excited because all of these stories in here have been great so I expect that the last one will be great as well. And then last but not least, I'm also making great progress in my audiobook. I think I have about 30% left now, something like that. So yeah, that will get read as well. I think I will finish that one next week. And again, I'm very excited about it. I'm loving the audiobook, but I'm also excited about finishing it because it took me a very long time. And yeah, I'm also excited to start a new audiobook. So we will see about that. So today's the 24th of November. We have one month left until Christmas and I have exactly 75 pages left of Les Mis. So Right now it's looking like we're getting like a happy end, which um, I was not expecting. <laughs> so, I mean, there is still 75 pages to go, but knowing Victor Hugo, it might very well be that like basically nothing happens for the rest of this book. So I don't know. Is this a happy ending? 
I don't know. So we'll see. Um, I hope I can finish this probably tomorrow. It would be really cool if I could finish this tonight, but I know myself and I have lots of things to prepare because even though, you know, it's COVID and stuff like that, I'm planning on going home um, to my family for two days and so I'm preparing lots of things for them that I, you know, want to take them because, you know, it's almost Christmas and I haven't seen my family since August. And so, yeah, we just want to make sure we see each other while it is still legal to do so. So we will see. Um, yeah, so I'm just preparing lots of stuff this week, hoping that, um, you know, they won't change things last minute. But we'll see. And so I don't know how much reading will be. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll get done. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll just, I have to go So now. today is the 25th of November and I am finally so, so close to the end of Les Mis. Um, last night I finished, what was it, book seven, I think, of the fifth part. So now I only have the last book of it left, which is roughly about 27 pages. So I'll definitely finish this tonight and I'm so, so, so excited. And I'm also very confused because I'm like, what am I going to read after this? <laughs> There's too many possibilities now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very excited to finally finish this. The part I read last night is the most horrible part ever. I cried so much and I really, I don't cry reading books. So this was um, something else. It really hit me in the feels. So I'm excited to see what this last part does now, whether I'm going to cry again, maybe, possibly. I don't want to. So yeah, we'll see. And I'll tell you all about that tomorrow. So today is the 26th of November. And yesterday I finally finished Les Mis. And it felt like such an accomplishment. I'm so happy. I also read the introduction yesterday. And with that, this brick is done. And yeah, this was so much fun. I definitely want to read another like thick classic next year. But for now, it's like a really weird concept for me to think that the next book I read, I will not read for two months. <laughs> so yeah, kind of fun. Um, so the ending of this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I think um, it was quite well done. It was a little bit over dramatic, but that is kind of what I expect from a classic like that. I really dislike Marius. <laughs> he's just he's just not my favorite character. I'm sorry. Um but yeah, I really enjoyed this and I think I will talk more about it in the wrap up part, but I still have to gather my thoughts a little bit because this was a project and it's always kind of hard to talk about something like this. So I think in the end I gave it four stars. Um, I think it definitely has its flaws, but I just loved the voice of Victor Hugo. I think he's such an interesting person and was a very progressive mind. So yeah, I enjoyed reading this huge tome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm done. So I decided for my next read, for tonight when I go take a bath, I want to um, use the second book. Um, what's this series called? Barefoot, Barefoot Gen, I think. Yeah, it's called Barefoot Gen. This is the second installment. This is a manga series all about Hiroshima and the bombs that were dropped there at the end of World War II. And um, the first book is kind of like... World War II Japan and it ends with the drop of the bombs and so this book picks up right after that and we follow the first day after this catastrophe and yeah this is gonna be a harrowing read um, but the first volume was a five-star read for me it was perfection in my opinion and so I'm really excited to continue on with this series I currently have the books out from the library and so I thought why not finish the series off now Apart from that, I have about one and a half hours left of my current audiobook, which is Cemetery Boys. And I feel like the big showdown has happened now. I felt like it was a little bit disappointing, like the trope that was used is one that I don't enjoy that much. It's not that it was bad or anything. It's just not my personal taste. I was really hoping that the book would go another way. It was very easy to see kind of like the mystery and where it was going, but I don't think that's the main point of this book. So yeah, um, I'm excited to get to like the nice 
happy ending now hopefully we'll see <laughs> but um, yeah I want to finish uh, that off today or tomorrow and then tomorrow I will start my new audiobook which I just bought and it's called The Christmas Invitation and it's quite a long book the um, print edition is over 500 pages and the audiobook is like 14 hours so I'm really intrigued to see how I like it because these are the kinds of book I, I only read around Christmas time with like a little bit of romance and some you know coziness and stuff like that so yeah I'm very intrigued to see how I like that but I will start that tomorrow and then keep you up so I'm right out of the bathtub and I just finished um, Barefoot Jen the second volume and if you really want to hate the human race you definitely have to read the series this follows um, Jen and what's left of his family after the Hiroshima bomb dropped and this is called the day after but it's actually like the first couple of days like three four days maybe um after that event and yeah it just really makes you hate humans <laughs> because yeah they're just not great and you never want to you never want to depend on any other human um so yeah I would give this four stars. I think that the storytelling in the first one is definitely a little bit better because it kind of leads up to this horrifying event. Whereas with this one, you are basically constantly in that situation. And so it kind of, I don't want to say it wears off, but you know, the horror does kind of wear off a little bit. Um, I think the first one is just even more impactful but I think it's important to hear what happens after as well even though it's definitely not enjoyable so this is not a series you should read for enjoyment um, but I think you should read it for education and learning that war is not fair and that nothing that happens in war is fair and that in war nobody gets what he deserves or she deserves so yeah I will go on to the third volume um, tomorrow or in a couple of days and tell you more So about it that. is the 27th of November today and last night I finished Cemetery Boys on audio and I absolutely loved it. Um, I decided to give it four stars just because I feel like the fantasy elements could have been done better and also the mystery. That was the part that I was disappointed with the most. I felt like the mystery really wasn't a mystery. It was very easy to see. And also, um, yeah, I just didn't like the trope that was picked up there. So in the end, I decided to give it four stars, but I would still highly recommend this book. And it's one of those books where I'm just so glad that it exists and it gave me so many like really warm and fuzzy feelings and there were so many great quotes in there especially the talk at the end at the ceremony I don't want to spoil it but yeah that was a very very powerful scene as well and a lot of like really incredible things were said there that for me are totally true and yeah it was just such a hopeful and fun book that I think you will definitely enjoy it. So as I said, I think there is still room for improvement, but for what the book did, I really, really enjoyed it. And so that is Cemetery Boys. So today I will start the new audiobook and yeah, I will go see my family and fingers crossed that nothing bad happens, we'll see. So today is the 30th of November, it's the last day and I wanted to update you on my reading from the weekend. So I managed to finish part three in Barefoot Gen. This is a manga series about uh, the bombing of Hiroshima. I felt like part I felt like part three was my least favorite one so far. I think I will still give it like 3.5 or 4 stars. It's still very interesting, but I felt like this one didn't focus so much on Jen on his family, and I do prefer following them. Um, this had a little bit of a different focus and it was very horrifying again, so these are definitely not fun reads. But yeah, I just felt like we went away a little bit too much from uh, Jen's family and I kind of missed that. So yeah, I finished that yesterday. And so today I want to read part four. I think this is the last part, at least in the German copies. I'm pretty sure of that. So yeah, I want to finish this series off today. So... I will talk about that more 
soon. <laughs> And then I uh, also started my audiobook. I told you about it, I think. It's called The Christmas Invitation by Trisha Ashley or something like that. It's really cute so far. So we're following a character who is almost in her 40s. And she is an artist and she just had a pretty bad illness. And when she's out of the hospital, she's basically whisked away by this professor woman who also writes crime novels. She's really fierce and she wants the artist to paint her portrait and so she takes her with her um, to her home and that is you know somewhere in Britain. I'm really not comfortable with like British geography and so at her home they're all very excited about Christmas so they invite the artist to stay over Christmas and then um, the artist realizes that there is a guy who's part of this family that but she didn't know that and she met him in college and they had a little bit of history but it ended pretty badly so it's kind of like a second chance romance I guess um, it's quite long it's like 14 hours in the audiobook and over 500 pages I believe in the printed edition so I'm now I still have nine hours left so I'm like five hours and something in and I'm really enjoying it I really like the main character I think she's lots of fun she has this ex who is a total douche and I love that she is putting him in his place a lot and also, I just really like that she's not this kind of stereotypical 20-something girl. But she grew up in a commune and as I said, she's already like 30-something, 30 37 maybe, something like that. And she's still single and she has a little bit of drama in her past as well with the ex and an accident that happened there. And yeah, I just feel like it's a really fun uh, romance Christmas novel and... I'm excited to see where it goes and tell you more in December. So today is the 1st of December and so it's officially the end of this reading vlog. Last night I started the first part, no, the fourth part in this um, manga series but unfortunately I did not finish it because we did too many other things but that's all right. Um, I will finish it today and um, I also saw that <laughs> this is actually I think a 10 book series but my library only has the four books so I'm not quite sure whether I want to continue with it or not. I think for now I will leave it at that. Um, because I feel like the books get less and less impactful just because it is kind of a repetition all over again and through the interviews you know how the life of the author went so I feel like I know a lot of the things that will happen probably through this series. So as I said I'm not quite sure if I want to continue this but this is the end of the vlog part. Now I will transition you into the wrap-up. Okay, so welcome back to the wrap-up part of this video where I want to quickly show you all of the books that I finished in November and tell you a little bit about them. So the first book I finished in November was a book I had started in October. It's called The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith and this is a very fun story where we follow Claire who is a librarian in hell and the books that she is kind of caring for are unwritten books. So that's why it's the library of the unwritten. So it's all the books that people have thought about but never actually written the book down. And sometimes with these books a character can come to life and escape. And so Claire's job is basically to look after these books, make sure that none of the characters from the books um, escape to earth and kind of try to influence their authors to actually write the book because that's something they're interested in. So one day when Claire is doing that she gets trapped in this kind of power thing between hell and heaven where both of these sides are looking for a certain book and since it is a book Claire thinks that maybe she should get involved and try to stop a war that might break out between heaven and hell uh, because 
they both want this book. So that's the main setup of the storyline and we also get a very nice conclusion even though this is the first book in the series so the second one is already out if you're interested. I have not read the second one yet because my library only had the first one but I really enjoyed this. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I really liked the characters. I had a lot of fun with them. I thought that the plot was quite cool as well because while they try to find those pages of that book, they go through all kinds of different like afterlives and I thought that was very well done and very interesting. And also there's this kind of like, like a little bit of a, it's not like a mystery, but you have this kind of twist in the story that I thought was very interesting and I just really cared about these characters and I wanted them to do well and to be well and so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Then the next book I finished was this short story collection called Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang and this is a sci-fi story collection. These stories were all published before and now they're just put into this collection um, all together and I really really like this. This has eight different stories and I did enjoy all of these. I thought every story in this was very unique and you could really tell that these were not all written within a year or something like that because the focus was so different in all of these stories. But as I said, there wasn't a single story that I did not like. But obviously my favorite story in here is the title story. Um, it's called Story of Your Life and it is the story that the movie Arrival is based on. And I absolutely love that movie and it's actually the reason why I picked this book up because I read the um, this story, Story of Your Life, for the reading rush and so now I finished up all the other stories that were in here and they were just fantastic. I think if you're interested in sci-fi, Te Chiang is such a good author. Um, this is not the kind of like space sci-fi, it's very much set on Earth, but sometimes it has this kind of like a fantasy twist where it's like almost like a biblical story or something like that but the kind of, yeah, it's all set on Earth still and um, he just plays with like different sciences. So for example, Story of Your Life plays with languages and you know, the science behind language and how language kind of forms how we perceive the world and stuff like that. So that's why I really like these stories because I feel like they are the kind of sci-fi that is very intelligent, very clever, but still kind of, relatable in a way because it, it just feels very, very real in a weird kind of sense. Um, so yeah, I really, really love this. I decided to give this whole collection 4.5 stars as well, which is just kind of the mean of all the star ratings I gave the individual stories. And yeah, I would highly recommend picking this one up. Then I spent the majority of the month finishing up uh, Le Miserable by Victor Hugo. This is a book that I had started in September and I've read about half of this book in September and then finished it up in November. I did this for the Le Miss Along, which I would have never picked this book up if it wasn't for that read along. I don't know, these kind of big classics always scared the hell out of me, but I thought there is no better chance for me to read it than with this read-along thing. And I really liked that they had quite huge time, time slots basically for the parts. So um, you could really take your time and read it at your own pace, but still discuss it with other people. And I felt like that worked out really, really well. And yeah, so I finished this in November. Um, this story follows mainly a guy called Valjean. I can't pronounce French names, I'm sorry. But he um, gets out of prison where he served a very long sentence for a very minor crime and he tries to get back into the world and to become part of society again. But because he has to disclose that he was in prison, people shun him and they just don't want anything to do with him and stuff like that. And then we follow him, how he's struggling to build a life for himself in this world. And this is around the time of the French Revolution so kind of like early 1800s in France. So you learn a lot about the French Revolution while you read this as well. But also I would recommend already knowing a couple of things about it because since this was all stuff that happened during um, Hugo's lifetime, he doesn't always explain it in a way that you can really follow. So um, this is also a 
version of the book that is a little bit abridged. So he took out a couple of references that nowadays no one would understand anymore and stuff like that. So uh, if you want like an unabridged version, don't get this Penguin one. Um, but I felt like this was a very readable version and I just enjoyed it a lot. So in the end, I gave this four stars. Um, I think that there's definitely things you can criticize about this. For example, Hugo likes to go on these really long rants and this can really take away from the story. But I think as a non-English reader, this didn't bother me too much because it's something that we are much more comfortable with. Um, I think because in English literature, stories have to be told much more straightforward, where like in other languages like French and German, you can go on these rants and it's kind of like a normal thing. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't mind that too much. Some were really, really interesting. Um, some were a little bit too much, you know, stuff you didn't need to know. For example, there's a long chapter about the sewers and how they were kind of, um, yeah, uh, built and how they were changed during the time of the French Revolution, stuff like that. So yeah, it's all a little bit much, <laughs> but if you don't mind that, I think you can still take a lot away of this book. And I especially liked how Hugo thought about social justice and inequality and, you know, with having a main character who was in prison, I think it's a, just a very unique point of view because usually even nowadays, people who were in prison are still perceived of um, some someone who's like outside of society and shouldn't be part of it because he broke the rules and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I, I just think that this book is like very interesting if you're into these kind of themes. It's also kind of heartbreaking if you read these kind of speeches that were made where people are so hopeful that when they win this kind of revolution thing and when they do that, they can bring like equality <laughs> to all the people, which obviously never happened. And we still have huge struggles over inequality nowadays. And it's just so sad to see how they were so hopeful that the world would be such a better place by now. And it's not. So... Yeah, keep that in mind if you want to read it, but I would highly recommend it. I had a lot of fun reading this and you just have to give yourself the time to do it, I guess, and not stress out over finishing it in like two weeks or something like that. Then the next book I finished was my audiobook Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. And this was also a book I had started in October, but then just carried on listening to it in November. I really enjoyed this audiobook. You're following... Yadriel, <laughs> who is a trans boy who lives in this kind of Bruhex community and he wants to show his family that he's a bru brujo <laughs> and so he decides to do this ritual with Lady Death on his own uh, only with the help of his cousin Baritza and they kind of um, do this in a like creepy graveyard at night um, and it actually works and he gets these kind of magical powers and with those he summons a ghost and he thinks it is the ghost of another cousin of him who recently passed away and they're trying to figure out what happened because they um, can't solve this murder and the police isn't helping them which was also a scene in this book which I found to be so powerful and just like for people who don't really understand how the police system works for minorities. I think this is a very, very good example. And so he summons this ghost, but it's not actually his cousin, but a guy from his school, um, Julian, who also recently passed away. And so they kind of get trapped in this murder mystery thing. But it's also a lot of a romance and it's so cute. and. If you go into this book, I would recommend going into it for the obviously queer rap and uh, the romance and the fuzzy feelings and stuff like that, because the um, mystery aspect of it is quite obvious from a very, very early point. And so I think reading it for the mystery is a little bit disappointing. That's also the reason why in the end I decided to give it around a four star because yeah, it could have been better with these kind of like mystery aspects, but it's just a book where I'm so happy that it exists and I had a great time listening to it as an audiobook. 
And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is this manga series. It is called Barefoot Gen in English. And obviously it was originally published in Japanese. And this is a manga series that follows a survivor of the Hiroshima bomb. So um, this is a very harrowing read, obviously. And also I read the first volume of this during the reading rush and that was a five star read for me. It was the best graphic novel comic manga thing I have ever read. So I was really intrigued to continue on with this series and see where it goes because that first book follows this family of a boy called Jen and he's about six years old I think up until the point where the bomb hits Hiroshima. So we see a lot of his family and how the kind of wartime Japan, um, what it looked like and how people lived during that time and then obviously with the bomb at the end it's like it's like a, yeah it's just like a crushing feeling like it's really really horrible to read but I would highly recommend if you can read it and if you're not like triggered and want to hide under a stone afterwards definitely go and read it and so these other volumes I read this month um, follow Jen afterwards and yeah this is just you know it's one of those reads where like every volume is just bad stuff over bad stuff over bad stuff and I think it's important to read these kind of books to realize in what kind of privilege we actually live today so I would recommend reading this but I decided to stop now I think the German edition even has one more book but my library doesn't have it for some reason but I feel like reading this I won't gain any more information and it's just you know, it's just a series that really puts you down and you start hating humanity so much. So if you're ready for this, I would highly recommend these books and I think it's very interesting. It's also an interesting piece if you're interested in the kind of manga history because I think the first volume of this was the first full-length kind of manga that was ever translated into English, if I remember correctly, um, because this was actually written in the 70s, I believe, originally. So yeah, it's just, as I said, it's a very interesting read, but you have to prepare yourself mentally because it's not happy times. And so I think I gave the second and the third, no, only the second one I gave four stars and the third and the fourth volume I gave 3.5 stars. Because, as I said, it's just, yeah, you have just a lot of horrible things happening and I felt like especially the last volume was a bit weird. I don't know if they kind of shortened it for the German editions because sometimes you had these huge time jumps and with, you know, the changing of a scene, suddenly you were somewhere completely different and sometimes that was very hard to follow and I don't know why that happened in this last volume. If Maybe that's just a translation thing. So yeah, I think I'm done now with the series, but it was very interesting. And I think more people should go and read about this horrible event. So we can all make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen again. So these were all the books I wanted to talk about today. I also started an audiobook that I um, will not talk about here. It's called The Christmas Invitation and I read about a third of that in November, but I will talk more about that in the December vlog. So if you're interested in that, um, you can check that out. But so far I'm really enjoying that audiobook. So if you're looking for a Christmassy read, that one seems to be quite a fun one. So yeah, that will be all. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like or a nice comment. I always appreciate those. And if you subscribe, I will talk to you soon. Bye.